Hello everyone and welcome to Divine Debut. Thank you for being here. These are your readings from May the 1st until May the 15th of 2020. I will be doing a Celtic cross but I will be starting this reading with some planetary news. Just looking quickly at the stars. Uh, if you want to stick around you may do so as with the reading today I will be taking the Connolly Tarot for the main spread. I will be taking a couple of cards from the Doreen Virtue Romance Angels. At the end of the reading you'll be able to ask your question and get an angel answer. I will be using the La Vera Sibila, which I use many times, usually on the longer readings. Uh, I will be clarifying the reading with the small Rider weight. And I will also be taking a couple of personalized messages from the characters that are showing up in the reading. So do stay until the end of the reading. I will have it in the description box below the timestamp. So when the tarot starts, for those of you that are not interested in the astrology. Also, I'd like to mention that I do uh, take a guidance card every day on social media my links are in the description box below and I also do a reading the daily divine spread for all of you and I keep you um, guided daily as what is going on the collective uh, scale on a collective scale but as well as on a personal I do read the cards as they speak to me how I feel they should be read so I do hope that you are enjoying these daily readings. Okay, I think I will leave it at that. Let's start off with the astrology a little bit for May, as I always do more astrology at the beginning of the month than in the mid-month readings. I'm also uploading, I forgot to say, uh, love readings. Okay, and the love readings usually go from mid-month, from mid-month to mid-month of the next month. So I've done April until mid-May now. You can watch those. They're up on my channel. Um, I think that's all I've got to say. Let's quickly look at May and the astrology. Uh, what is important to say is that Venus, um, Venus moving through the sign of Gemini, she's actually going to be turning retrograde on the 12th or 13th of May, depending on where you are in the world. Venus will be retrograding until roughly the end of June. She'll be coming out of shadow in July. So she will be in that sign, the sign of Gemini, for quite a while. Um, she will be squaring over to Neptune, um, Neptune in the sign of Pisces. It will be, most of her transit, her retrograde motion will be squaring Neptune. And this is Venus trying to make sense Okay, where there is no sense, where there is confusion, Neptune. Um, she is also going to be showing us what is valuable, what we love, what is the truth, because Gemini is all about the truth. It's all about communicating, um, communicating uh, in relation to what is important to us, what we want to manifest. Now, we know that. Um, Venus moving through the sign of Gemini right across is Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, which is right across, it's in opposition to Gemini. Sagittarius is all about the truth. So Venus is now trying to communicate and work through any problems. We know that with retrograde motion, um, it's a time to redirect the energy, go inwards, as we know that the planet is more closer to the earth and therefore its energy is more amplified um, and interesting to know that Jupiter the day after will be retrograding Jupiter rules Sagittarius which is right across so that'll be interesting now what else we've got in the month of May is that we're having a full a super full moon in the sign of Scorpio. We know that Scorpio is already very deep, um, very deep and transformative. So things that have been hidden, which is Scorpio, 
secrets, fears that have been hidden, that haven't been shown to us, will be as a full moon is a culmination. There's a lot of light. It's the reflection of the moon and the sun. So we get to see what endings are around the, the uh, archetype of Scorpio. Okay, so that's going to be happening on the 7th of May. Okay, 7th of May and that'll be very interesting as we know it's going to be very transformative, whatever we're going to be shown. Now that's the new moon, that we had a new moon in Taurus at the end of April and now we're going to see the full moon culmination in the sign of Scorpio and we know that Scorpio and Taurus are right across from each other. Whenever there is a new moon in one sign, the opposite sign has the full moon. So new moon in Taurus, as we're still in Taurus season, happy birthday to those of you that are Tauruses, um, we always have that new moon in our birthday. So obviously the moon is brand new in the sign of Taurus. Now we're going to see the culmination in the sign opposite, which is Scorpio. And well, it's going to be very interesting to see. Now we're going to have in the month of May, on the 22nd of May, we're going to have a new moon in the sign of Gemini as we will, towards the end of May, um, we move into the, into the uh, time of Gemini. So I'm going to wish those of you that are Gemini, happy birthday for the later part of uh, May. You will be having your new moon. So a new moon in the sign of Gemini at um, on the 22nd of May. Now, on May 11th, Mercury will be entering Gemini as Mercury is still now in the sign of Taurus. Okay, so today um, is the 30th of April and Mercury is still transiting through the sign of Taurus. As I said, on the 11th, moves into Gemini. We know that Mercury rules Gemini and therefore this will be strong communication. We know Mercury is about business collaboration, uh, anything to do with the internet, okay, anything ele electronic, anything that speaks to mobility and anything surrounding communication. And at the end of May, Mercury on the 28th will be moving into the sign of Cancer. Now, um, yeah, so Venus will be transiting through the sign of Gemini the whole of the month. Mars will be entering Pisces as Mars is still transiting through the sign, the air sign of Aquarius. Mars and, you know, Mars is fire, air is what is Aquarius. So fire and air, there's quick movement with Mars through the sign of Aquarius. On May 13th, Mars will be moving into Pisces, that nebulous um, area of Pisces will be slowing Mars down. Mars is practically, that's how I feel, Mars slows down in Pisces as there is a lot of um, nebulous, yes, lack of clarity, but it's also, uh, Pisces is a water sign. So water trumps fire, it puts it out, so it slows it down. Okay, Jupiter, as I said, will be retrograding, yes, in the sign of Capricorn still. Saturn on May 11th will start retrograding back. Saturn in Aquarius, will, it's roughly just past the one degree. It will be moving back towards the uh, area of Capricorn. Saturn rules both Capricorn and Aquarius. So it's comfortable in both places, but Saturn in Aquarius is more lighter. It's not as heavy as what in Capricorn. Now it's moving back towards Capricorn again. It's going to finish anything that it left behind. Um, and we know that Saturn is much more heavier in Capricorn, but it will be moving backwards to, you know, re-look at something before it starts to move direct again. Um, so... They're the most important things to mention. I just wanted to mention also that that full moon 
in the sign of Scorpio will be around the 17 degree mark on May 7th. So for those of you that are familiar with your charts, you can see what is happening um, around that 17th degree mark if you've got something around the 17th degree of any fixed signs because Scorpio is fixed. So the fixed signs are Scorpio, Taurus, Leo and Aquarius. Okay, so anything that is any planets or points that you've got around that, those degrees, uh, it means that you will be affected very strongly by this full moon. Also, I'm going to mention the most important thing I nearly forgot is that around the 5th of May, the nodes, north node, south node of the moon um, will be changing. North node in the sign of Cancer will be moving into Gemini and the south node in the sign of Capricorn will be moving into Sag. We know that the nodes move in the opposite way to what the planets do. So we're leaving the areas, Cancer, home, Capricorn, work, career, and we're moving into North Node in Gemini. Gemini, which I've already mentioned what Gemini is all about, and Sagittarius. Sagittarius is all about freedom, going on that adventure. That's where the South Node will be leaving old structures, old beliefs in the past. We know that the South Node is something that's very familiar to us and it's very, very karmic. So leaving things to do with Sagittarius, Sagittarius is also foreigners, it's also higher education, it's the, it's the, sorry, the house of philosophy and we know that Gemini is all about learning, learning um, in a group environment what is close to our foundation our neighborhood you know any teachings and anything to do with again communication it, fresh energy is Gemini whereas Sagittarius is more the philosophy it's the wisdom the wise so North Node will be moving into Gemini South Node will be in Sagittarius okay and I will more than likely put in something, um, I'm going to do another video more than likely on the nodes um, as soon as I have these videos up. So I want to leave the astrology where it is at the moment. Thank you so much for listening. Let's now go on to your tarot reading, everyone. Hello, Virgo. Hello. How are you? Thank you so much for being here. For your May 1st till the 15th of 2020 general and love reading, I am doing a Celtic cross. Hope that you're all well and that you've been well with whatever's going on in the world. Um, I've also got the uh, a lot of important messages in the first part of the video, so if you've jumped straight to the tarot, I do speak a lot about the astrology in the first section and what I offer so maybe you should have a look at that if you have not let's have a look at what's going on for you generally and in love Virgo for the beginning till mid May of 2020 please spirit what does Virgo need to know what's happening with Virgo and we have the ten of Pentacles so this could be a family situation in the now position, your heritage, your extended family, things to do with money, marriage. Your challenge is to start a new cycle, Virgo, to take the risk, become the Aries warrior. Make a choice, as this person has got a lot of choices, as you can see, starting a new cycle, as there is some sort of an ending. We know that this cannot go very further. The Ten of Pentacles is the end for a new beginning to start. We've got the full. Are you going to be taken as the full or are you going to take the risk? You're going to leave the heavy um, energy that you've been dealing with. Obviously, the full is a major arcana, so a karmic cycle has ended for you. 
Are you still stuck there or are you moving? What's at your foundation? Oh, we've got the Ace of Wands. There's the fire beneath you. You've got the power to move. You've got that Martian energy. What about your recent past? Two of Swords. Decisions, decisions. How difficult is it to make a decision on such an important level? I can understand that. But you are seeing the signs. The Fool is Major Arcana. The challenge is to see the signs. Are you looking or are you blinded to that? As the Two of Swords is usually someone wearing a blindfold. What about what's on your mind? Knight of Swords. Quick communication. Quickly severing ties with the past. Knight of Swords is moving. Virgo wants to get unstuck, I see here. Now we do have, we've got a couple of air cards here, the air archetype, so Aquarius, Gemini or Libra. We've got Virgo, which is, this is your energy, could be also, of course, Ten of Pentacles, could be uh, Capricorn and Taurus as well. And we've got fire. What about in the near future, dear Virgo? What's going on? Nine of Swords. More about stress, more stress here. Sleepless nights, what's going on? Maybe the challenge is for the person you're dealing with to take charge. This could also be a physical distance, as we know the fool is someone who goes on a journey. This is the traveler. Let's see in the position of you. And you've got the world card. And the world card says that, yes, you will be putting an end to this karmic cycle. You've successfully completed. So don't stay stuck in your head, dear Virgo. Okay, don't use your logic too much at this time as if you have been thinking only about what is dark and, you know, the worst fears you're dealing with here. That's just a cycle that you're going through. It's all up in your head. The world says that, yes, we are still on lockdown. Soon we'll be able, we'll be free and able to take action maybe even to move. Now the world can also speak of places at a distance or people that are at a distance. What is in your environment? We've got the Six of Cups. So this is a soulmate connection. This is a soulmate connection. Now in your environment, yes, you may have your own children, but this is a time when things used to be much more clear. You were you know, this is back in the days when there was trust, okay, maybe you're coming out of a connection that has now um, turned sour, the, the ending is here, so if you're wanting to find your balance, again, you're needing to make that choice, that very important choice, if you are dealing with a soulmate connection here. Let's see what's in your hopes and fears. We've got the Two of Cups. So Virgo, there is someone. There is someone for you, someone that is connected to you in a very powerful way. Two of Cups and Six of Cups is no doubt the soulmate connection. This is what you're hoping for, of course. It's not a fear. I'm going to say that uh, also, if you are dealing with someone that's got strong air in their chart, could be air could be any other sign that I've mentioned already. We do have a fair bit of water here as well. Could it be that they could be fearing the soulmate connection? They're trying to understand this, make sense of it. Let's see what the outcome is. And we've got the Page of Cups. So Pisces, Pisces for Virgo is their seventh house. Now Page of Cups could be a juvenile offer. It's not something, it's not a king, let's say. So someone is trying to mature, trying to grow into this, but this could also mean as well that this is an unexpected offer that's coming through. We know that the Page of Cups can also be an apology. So if there has been troubles, if you've been dealing with a soulmate connection where there have been troubles, this could be the apology coming through. Because we know the Knight of Swords could also be a fight, okay? As you can see, the clouds, very dark in the background. Now we do have two and the two and the ace equal three of swords. So there has been something difficult that you've been dealing with in this connection. 
your challenge is, are you willing to start this over, start from the beginning? As this chapter has closed, dear Virgo, are you still trying to close a karmic cycle? Or are you just at a physical distance? You may be dealing with someone that is at a physical distance. What's at the bottom of the deck? And we've got the King of Cups. Oh, wow, well, no, I wasn't looking all this time. Here is the King of Cups. He's ready to offer his cup to you. Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. Pisces is more than likely. So far, we've got Cancer here. This is a fated connection. The Chariot card is asking for movement, for trying to overcome the obstacles. Now, the Cancer card is where the North Node is. The North Node is finishing up in the sign of Cancer. This could be someone leaving a long-term relationship and moving towards their fate, okay? Moving to something that they feel is their destiny. Virgo, moving towards destiny. Moving, see? You're crossing that bridge. You are. You have been crossing that bridge. And now, after the six, this is a seven. Seven is the divine the divine is pushing you towards that and the king of cups is someone that is ready for love let's take some more cards let's look at the romance angels for love now if this is of course anything to do with money and business There is an offer on the table. It's not such a huge offer. I do feel as though you've been coming from something very stable. Spirit is asking you to take a chance, okay, as you've got the creative energy here. It's important to make the decision, even if it's a blind decision, and go for it. Use your intellect and your logic, dear Virgo. Don't stay stuck in your fears. Nine and one is ten, okay? The world is your oyster. The world is at your feet here. You can come into emotionally balancing out a strong partnership as well. But this is also saying to me is that when Virgo is balanced in the emotional air arena, then that's when the offers start to come in. Whether this is business, uh, whether this is an apology or whether this is an offer of love that you see as quiet you see this person as being some somehow immature and maybe they were maybe they needed to go through these lessons maybe they needed time here we've got the king of cups and we know the page of cups could also be a child could this be a father let's look at the romance angels and the love life of virgo from the first until the 15th the spirit Archangel Michael, Archangel Jeffrey. What is happening in love for Virgo? Virgo. What does Virgo need to know? We have give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership. We have true love. This is the romance of a lifetime. Yes, this is true love. Some of you, if you have been dealing with a past relationship that was quite difficult, then uh, maybe you've given that relationship many chances in the past. But true love has come in. What are you going to do? We know that the card of true love is a romance of a lifetime. Are you going to not move into that Virgo? And we've got calling in your soulmate. Here is Archangel Michael. You've been wishing and praying for this Virgo. Your prayers, affirmations and visualizations help bring you together. So this means that obviously your partner in love has also been asking spirit for love. Romantic feelings. Your feelings are real and worth exploring. So this is a time of exploration are you going to take that leap of faith let's take more cards let's have a look at this ten of pentacles
we know that the Ten of Pentacles could also be a marriage card. So if you're going to, maybe it's your partner. Maybe it's your partner that's needing to take a risk on this. If this is someone that was not ready for commitment, let's see. And we've got the moon, which is all about fears, could mean deception. And the page of pentacles, page of pentacles does speak of someone who is, you know, they've come to an end of a cycle and they're looking at something new. Don't let fear hold you back, dear Virgo. Now, we know that the moon can also speak of strong intuition, strong connection. When we look at the moon in the synastry, in love relationships, it's a very deep connection. As I was saying before, your subconscious, pay attention to that, pay attention to your dreams. This could mean that subconsciously you feel very connected. Um, now the actualization of this, if you are someone that is at a distance to each other, this could be the manifestation, the, the reality of this new connection. Now the moon does speak of Pisces and Cancer. Cancer is home. Pisces is illusion. Pisces could also speak of something that is hidden. Now the, the uh, moon is the fourth house. We know that the north node of the uh, the north node is moving out of the sign of Cancer and moving into Gemini. Gemini is all about collaboration, communication, where things were not communicated now. If things are changing let's look at this ace of wands which is at your foundation and we've got the hermit you've been looking for the truth Virgo. this is your card you've been looking for the truth you've been soul searching some of you could even be creating at home working with spirit working with magic this could also be a teacher a philosopher, someone who's into languages, into anything that is worldly. And whatever you're creating, dear Virgo, this is very strong creative energy. Whatever you're creating, you're ready to bring it out to the world. Whatever's been hidden, the next step is the will of fortune. Let's look at this two of swords. Oh, we've got the seven of swords. Yeah. Yeah, this is a card of being intelligent, making an intelligent decision, but this is also seven and two, that's nine swords. Let's have a look at the nine of swords. And we've got the three of cups. Three of cups does say that you, whatever you've been working on, you've had sleepless nights, you've been thinking a lot, using your logic. This is saying emotions are all about our instinct, our intuition. Whatever decision you're making, Virgo, is going to be celebrated. Now, this could also mean gossip. Three of Cups can, can be a card of gossip. There could be three people involved. doesn't have to be three partners. It could be friends, associates, family. A lot of worry is around this. A lot of anxiety. But you're near the end of this this cycle here, the Nine of Swords. Let's have a look at that Knight of Swords, which can be quick communication coming through, or even a quick, you know, severing ties with the past, and we've got the Ten of Cups. The Ten of Cups does speak, again, of the ending of the cycle. The clarity comes in. Whatever communication is made, it's going to bring you to the end of your worry. Those of you that are dealing with a family member that has been quite harsh where their words are concerned. They've been the um, that evil family member. You may be cutting them out of your life. Knight of Swords, whether this is a family member or a past commitment. End of uh, the cycle, Ten of Cups. For those of you that are waiting on a soulmate, there will be communication. The other person is thinking of communicating, as I do feel that they've been in two minds, as there were trust issues in the past here, as you can see with the Seven of Swords. Let's have a look at that world card. And we have the death. 
death card, which is a major transformation. The death card is Scorpio, Pluto, powering up. Let's take another card on that death card. And we've got the Five of Wands. Five of Wands is someone trying to stand on their feet. Someone who is coming out of a major cycle and they're willing to put in the work. They've got shaky feet, if you get what I mean. This is like something like, just like when animals are born. I'm thinking of a lamb. Okay, as soon as it's born or a little horse, they struggle to stand on their feet. That's what is going on with you here, dear Virgo. You or your partner. Let's take another card on that. We've got the King of Swords. King of Swords is someone that is speak, going to speak their truth. King of Swords could be Aquarius, Gemini or Libra. Doesn't have to be. Someone was going to say that if there have been arguments between you and your partner, disagreements, the King of Swords is someone that is usually quite fair and open. This could be, of course, the partner that you're leaving behind as well. Let's have a look at this Six of Cups. Oh, we've got the King of Pentacles here. This is Taurus, the Virgo Capricorn. I would see him more than likely as a Taurian. Doesn't have to be. Could have strong water, Pisces. Maybe even Scorpio, if this is Taurus. Could be, could be a Taurus or a Scorpio. Let's have a look. This person is very stable, Virgo. This is someone that you can depend on. This is someone that will provide. They will provide you with stability, even emotional, material and emotional stability. Let's have a look at this Two of Cups. Oh, well, we've got the Ace of Wands. There isn't only emotion, there's also passion. Okay, so whatever you're creating, dear Virgo, whether this is a relationship in love or this is something that you're bringing out to the world, there is there is the indication here of success. Something is ready to take off. Let's look at that page of cups. And we've got the six of swords, which this offer is saying that it's going to help you move away from difficulties, from an imbalance. You're moving away. And this could be someone literally moving over water. Let's have a look at that King of Cups. King of Cups, please, Spirit, what's he all about? That's the general energy. Someone is ready to offer you unconditionally. And we've got the Empress. The Empress is here, dear Leo. Um, Leo was going to say. Leo got the Empress in the near future position. So for those of you Virgos that are on the cusp with Leo, this I would advise you go and watch their reading, the Leo reading. So we've got the King of Cups and the Empress here. And the Empress is all about love. She is the pinnacle of manifestation and growth. She is a creation. Something is being created here. And there is a lot of love between these two. There could be an age difference or a status difference. Here, we do know that the feminine is usually a little bit more mature than the masculine, as I was saying before. So maybe the masculine needed their time to come around. I want to take one more card here on that Six of Swords, dear Virgo. And we have Judgment. And judgment is Pluto. Here is the help from Archangel Michael. He's here twice. Dear Virgo, this is you rising up from your ashes. Virgo is being reborn. This is something that you were thinking of giving up on, but you kept going. You're moving towards major transformation. And a new lease on life I see here. And the judgment card we know is all about karma. Usually in the witch's tarot it does show the eclipsed moon. So 
this could be talking around about from now and of course forever when it's going to be different from now and until more than likely the time of Scorpio. Wow, Virgo, you've got the cars of the home and this is the connection, okay? I didn't say where I would take these cards. So just generally taking three Sibylas, we've got La Matrici, which is the woman lover. She goes for what she desires. She's holding something precious in her hand. She is very magnetic, very beautiful, and therefore she has got the security of something quite what's the word I'm looking for? Something the pinnacle of stability. A very strong foundation. That's what she can bring into her life. As there is an agreement here, we've got two and it's balance, right? Let's take another card and we've got Donna Maritata, the Empress. And the Empress is many times the, um, sorry, the Donna Maritata is very similar to the Empress. Other times she is the other person's wife. So I do see a single woman here and I see a woman that has got her own children. So this could be, I suppose, two of the same pe person. This could be your energy, dear Virgo. But the La Matrici is um, someone who goes for what they desire. So could you, could there be another feminine energy around you? A fire sign that would be more than likely. We've got another card that wants to open up. And we've got the Vedovo. And the Vedavo is someone that is mourning their past. Someone who's been in solitude. Now, if you are dealing with someone that was connected to another female, a female that was not more, was not really mother material, but was more about what they desired to bring in, this could be someone feeling very lonely, looking at their past and regretting what's happened. They are mourning something from their past. We've got the Prigione. So this could even be your energy, dear Virgo. Some of you may be mourning your restrictions in the past. You may also be crying over time lost. And we've got the Belvedere. Here you are on the lookout. You're waiting for someone or something to come in to manifest. Okay, you win some, you lose some, it says here. I That's what I see here with these Sabilas. And the Prigione can speak of someone being stuck in a situation. This is the Capricorn energy. Stuck in a cycle that was not making them happy at all. They needed to prove themselves before they could reap the rewards as they have suffered losses, they did, you did, doesn't really matter. I want to have a look. I want to have a look at your environment with this King of Pentacles. One card just fell. We've got the Omaggio di Preziosi, the precious gift. We have the Ladro, which is the negativity. This is, I see him as the outsider, as this is a 10. So this is something lost. Where a family situation is concerned, this is the negative side of something missing in a strong foundation. So losses, could be financial losses. This King of Pentacles is losing financial, the tangible things of value. And this could also be the change. I see the Ladro as a change here. And we've got the superbia. The superbia can speak of vanity. That could be the harsh energies here. The losses that may be because with the ladro, I do see it as the ten of pentacles. So ten of pentacles is all about uh, king of pentacles is someone that could be quite materialistic. He holds very 
high values where his comforts are concerned, right? And we do have the card of vanity here. So this may have been a tough lesson for this King of Pentacles as he has suffered either things that were of value and I feel as though this King of Pentacles has been brought down a few steps where the reality is concerned. Let's take another Sibylla and we've got the Giovina Fanciulla which is newness, pure, pure energies, the Virgin. Here we've got Messagero, so the news that is coming in is truthful and it is coming from a distance. And we've got Constanza, which is something unchanging. And what that says to me is that something that has been uh, uh, long lasting, something that you've been striving for, or this King of Pentacles has been working towards, there is newness and the news is coming through. Someone that's been persevering and believing in something, they do get the rewards for that. That's what I see with these Sibylas. All right, everyone. I want to have a look at... Now, we've got the King of Pentacles here. We've got the King of Swords, which could be a past partner. It doesn't have to be. This could be the same person. But we've got the King of Cups here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of messages from my handwritten cards. I'd like to have a look at this King of Cups, which is the general energy. King of Cups could be that Scorpio that is shown here. Could also be Pisces. Could also be Cancer. Let's have a look at the King of Cups. What does he want to communicate? You will always be in my heart. I can never or will never forget you. And what that says to me is that obviously this King of Cups is at a distance in physically, emotionally from this Empress. Let's have a look at the Empress. What does she want to say? I want a commitment. I want to have a family with you. I need stability. Let's do this. And this is a nice. So I was saying before that this King of Cups may have needed to mature as they may have not been ready for commitment, if you remember. Let's have a look at this King of Pentacles. Let's take another message here. We know that these messages will not resonate with everyone. We have, I will wait for you for as long as it takes. Remember what I said about this card, that someone was unwilling to change. They kept pushing for something. Let's take a look at this King of Swords as well. King of Swords, I needed more in my life. We did try, but we just couldn't find happiness. I am sorry. That's why this cycle ends. Let's have a look at this. I would like to have a look at this Page of Cups. What is this offer? Is it an apology or is it an offer? Looks like it's an apology. Wealth is not important to me. Wealth for me is connecting to my other half on a spiritual and emotional level. Nothing else matters. Wow, Virgo. Talk about powerful. What they're saying is that money is nothing to me. I need an emotional connection. Very important lessons learned, dear Virgo. Let's take a message from Spirit now. Let's take a couple of these cards. Please ask your question. Let's see if we can, if Archangel Michael and Archangel Lofield will help me provide the answer for you. Let's see if we can channel the correct answer for you. Please stop the video if you are not ready with your questions. Virgo. What does Virgo need to know please? So we have abundance, dear Virgo. Abundance, that means in love obviously, as well as prosperity. So on a, on a materialistic level, there is a lot of gold as you can see. 
just like Archangel Lovehill is full of gold. Look at that. That is a treasure, treasure chest for you. And we've also got compromise. So this is giving and receiving. Look at the scales there. Some of you may be needing to move into a legal situation so that you can find your abundance. And you may also need to compromise if you haven't been in balance. Let's take another card. And we've got choose a new direction. So choosing a new direction on a on a large scale that means that Virgo is choosing a new direction now this could be the person that you're dealing with they could be choosing a new direction as well let's take the bottom of the deck and it says recovery recovering from something that was difficult dear Virgo recovering that could be a physical recovery but that could also be a recovery where love is concerned as well as financial losses okay absolutely beautiful no need to worry Virgo no need to worry all right dear Virgo I will leave it at that I hope that this provided a little bit of clarity for you I want to thank you so much for taking the time out and I want to thank you so much for liking sharing subscribing just supporting my channel in general Sending you much love, much light, and I will be talking to you tomorrow on your daily reading. Bye for now.